work their magic, finding a faster, more cost-effective way to test an aircraft. Plus, Marines test a new capability for the F-35 Bravo that shows off the aircraft's rugged side. And the P-8 Alpha Poseidon soars to the rescue in a life-saving mission overseas. Welcome to this edition of Airwaves, I'm Michael Lauren Prue. We begin with a major milestone from the F-35 program. The next generation fighter is one step closer to full rate production. The final test flight of the system development and demonstration phase of the program took place in April at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland. F-35 Program Executive Officer Vice Admiral Matt Winter made the announcement during his presentation at this year's Sea Air Space Exposition. That is a significant milestone for this program. 60, 70,000 test points, over 9,000 flight hours. Not one lost aircraft, not one lost program team member, not one Class Alpha Concern or Bravo. Most major weapon systems go through a lot of learning. I'm very proud of our integrated test force and our integrated test team. The engineers, loggies, and program managers are government and industry teammates that have provided that success. Developmental flight test will formally be completed following an operational test and evaluation and a Department of Defense decision to go into full-rate aircraft production. In February, P-8 Alpha Poseidon showed off some of its capabilities, performing a real-life search and rescue mission off the waters of Micronesia. The Fighting Tigers from Navy Patrol Squadron 8 joined the search for some lost fishermen. The P-8 Alpha crew found the missing men in just a few hours, then successfully deployed a search and rescue kit that included a 10-man raft containing rations, drinking water, and survival gear. The fishermen were rescued shortly after that. The SAR capability reflects just part of the unique partnership between the Navy's Maritime Patrol and Reconnaissance Aircraft Program Office and the Royal Australian Air Force. The F-35 Patuxent River Integrated Test Force team brought the Marine Corps F-35 Bravo one step closer to operational test and evaluation in January and February. Teams built specialized landing pads at Marine Corps Auxiliary Landing Field in Bogue, North Carolina to test the aircraft's vertical lift capability in various environments. The goal was to determine how wind and rough terrain could impact the aircraft's performance. What we could do here with this testing was characterize the airplane's sensitivity and give the Marines the, the best capability we possibly could. The Marine uh, wing support squadrons there really stepped up to the job and they helped us to help them to have a more expeditionary vertical landing capability on the F-35. As an expeditionary force, Marines often operate in harsh conditions and from remote locations where airfields may not always be available. And the first F-35 Bravo assembled outside the United States landed at NAS Patuxent River at the end of January after completing a transatlantic flight from Camry Air Base in northern Italy. The flight follows the Italian Ministry of Defense acceptance of the aircraft at the Camry F-35 final assembly line. The aircraft is assigned to the Italian Navy and will undergo electromagnetic environmental effects certification at the Integrated Battle Space Simulation and Test Facility on NAS Patuxent River. Now to one of the fastest, most innovative ways to test a new aircraft. Keep it on the ground. Thanks to an advanced pulley system called Magic Wall, engineers can fully test an aircraft and its systems inside the anechoic chamber before it's ready to take flight. As a tester, it's exciting to think that we can put an aircraft in a basically a building and make it think it's anywhere in the earth and give it different data. We can simulate targets. We can simulate commercial aircraft. We can simulate if we're doing an attack. Virtual flight from the ground saves time and money. It also offers testers a first-hand look at how the system performs in a highly complex combat scenario. In San Antonio, Texas, flight tests are underway for ASTARS-3. The Navy Test Pilot School is getting its latest flying classroom ready for delivery to the Tuxet River. The newly remodeled C-26 aircraft is going through two test bays, making sure the plane works as it should, then test on the equipment inside the plane. It's an opportunity for the maintenance, uh, engineering, the test group, uh, the pilots all to sit together. Uh, they go over the test cards for the day to make sure that everybody's on the same page as far as what they're expecting when they go out to fly, uh, what the conditions are going to be met, um, and then the crew coordination that's going to be involved uh, with that process. At the same time, the test pilot school is gearing up for the new addition. TPS crews and Airworks work together to get the parts to build a new addition to the simulation lab. 
Soon it will work in conjunction with the C-26. Pilots are expected to fly the plane to Patuxent River later in 2018. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards, and innovation is all part of moving forward to our, you know, there, there's no stopping, there's no like final goal, you got to keep moving up. Innovation and readiness took center stage at this year's Commander's Awards. Each year, Navier recognizes individuals and teams for their accomplishments. This year's winners took home awards for achievement in speed to fleet, technical innovation, and small business advocacy. Leadership recognized 22 teams and one individual awardee. A new partnership at Patuxent River is bringing new capabilities to the warfighter, and it's coming from outside the gate. In January, NOC AD leaders, along with representatives from the Georgia Tech Research Institute, gathered in California, Maryland to kick off the new initiative called Innovation and Modernization Patuxent River, or IMPACTS for short. And it's actually an access point for industry and academia outside the government, outside of the front gate, to understand what our needs are inside the gate and spin in technologies that might be relevant to close a warfighter gap. Impacts also gives the Navy the advantage of trying out new ideas at a lower cost. And crossing out a lot of the usual contract processes means smaller and non-traditional companies will reap the benefits. In February, Fleet Readiness Center East announced the winners of its first innovation challenge. Launched in June 2017, participants were challenged to improve production within the facility in Cherry Point, North Carolina. The winning idea was a dynamic line blasting tool that addresses the problem of trying to hold onto small components with oversized protective rubber gloves. The innovation allows employees to blast the items with more than 1,000 pounds per square inch of blast media. FRC East leaders say they look forward to exploring all of the ideas presented in the Innovation Challenge. If you would like to learn more about the Innovation Challenge, check out our website at navair.navy.mil forward slash news. And that's it for this edition of Airwaves. See you on the flight line.